and the Hamilton Southeastern Royals take the field as we get ready for a big night of football. Hamilton Southeastern is hosting the visiting Shamrocks from Westfield. Both teams find themselves 4-1 and one in this season. And uh, the Shamrocks always have been tough, though the Royals have had their number through the years. So it'll be interesting to see how this evening materializes. I'm Jay Baker along with Dan Wood. Audio Sports Online. Dot com's coverage of Hamilton Southeastern Royals football. Royals are enjoying homecoming evening on a perfect evening here in central Indiana where temperatures got up to 82 degrees this afternoon. They'll cool to around 50 degrees as the evening wears on. Lights are on, the shadows are cast, and we're getting ready to have the Hamilton Southeastern Royal captains meet the Westfield captains at the midfield stripe. Referees are ready. The fans are ready. Fever pitch. Friday night lights. Always big here at Hamilton Southeastern. Always a nice crowd for homecoming. Big group of alum here enjoying the Royals. As the Shamrocks bring their captains onto the field. And we will see who will get the ball first here this evening. We got Cameron Polk out there. Some of the coaches talking about Cameron, who is destined to play a wide receiver in Louisville. And uh, of course, Louisville's had uh, some great success, NCAA top 20 team. And uh, Polk, with a lot of prowess, had a little trouble getting untracked against uh, Lafayette Jeff a week ago. But let's see tonight if this will be a breakout game for him as we find out that Hamilton Southeastern will be kicking off to the Shamrocks to begin this game. Also out there is Jordan May and Christian Pena, along with Peter Gorga, the captains tonight for the Hamilton Southeastern Royals. Across the way, the Westfield Shamrocks getting their team onto the field. Visitors... On their feet, referees final conference, and we are getting ready to commence a night of football as Brady Hoffman will be kicking off to start this game. We've had some pretty spectacular weather here in central Indiana, and of course tonight we'll take advantage of that. Perfect night out for the fans. Last week it was inclement up at uh, Lafayette Jefferson High School, and it was their homecoming, and Dan, it was kind of unfortunate because obviously for homecoming, you like to have a great turnout, but uh, the fans kind of stayed away because of the rain, and then when it stopped raining, there was a lot of wet seats, so not a lot of places to sit there yeah. for the game. But uh, And uh, Lafayette Jeff, a tough team. As a lot of people know, this conference will lose the Lafayette teams here, uh, the Lafayette and West Lafayette teams next season. So this is the final go-around to uh, travel up that far to play football on Friday night. Absolutely perfect weather for football tonight, though. It is absolutely perfect. As you said, it uh, did not get too hot today. And we'll get a chance to see these Westfield Shamrocks on offense first go-around. This is a team, by the way, the Shamrocks in the past played a pretty wide-open brand of football. The Royals have a great defense, so we'll see if Westfield will try to strike early to commence this game. IU Health Field, the home of the Royals, and the opening kickoff. As Hoffman puts his foot into it, ball will come down about the five-yard line. The Westfield returner to their 20. The 25 before he was forced out of bounds with authority. Good special teams play there by Christian Pena. And Pena delivered a bit of pain there to Devin Reese, the Westfield returner. And Westfield will begin their first series here. First and 10 on their own 24-yard line. So Westfield will begin on the 24. Hamilton Southeastern Royals will line up defensively. They've used the 3-4 to great advantage, and they will line up in that formation to commence. Nick Farrar 
in the pistol. He's back to pass. Pump fake. Long pass downfield and has an open receiver who does make the catch. On the catch is Devin Reese. And Reese with a big strike early on. Reese gives them a 54-yard reception. It'll be first and 10 for Westfield in Royals territory. They're going to set the ball up at the Royals 33 where it'll be first and 10. So Farrar strikes early. Handoff up the middle. Tries to find some running room. That is Frank Grimes. Grimes grinds the ball down inside the 30-yard line for the Shamrocks. And we talked about the fact that the Shamrocks, if they're going to assert themselves in this game, they'll have to do it early. They're going to spot the ball right at the 28-yard line. Somewhat of a hurry-up offense here for the Shamrocks trying to get the Royals off balance as Nick Farrar goes to work in the shotgun formation. He has two wideouts, Branch, wide to the left. Farrar, the swing pass. It's complete. Has some running room. Very close to the first down. Stop on the play by David Herman. So Herman stops the Westfield receiver. That is Ben Loftian. And Lafalian, I guess that's how you say it. Sorry, Lafalian does pick up a first down for the Shamrocks. Shamrocks first and 10 on this drive now at the 21-yard line of the Royals. Farrar goes back, delayed handoff, finds some running room to the outside. Once again, that is Grimes. Grimes is forced out of bounds by Herman. They're going to spot the ball. Only picked up uh, about a yard on the play. No, make that about a four-yard gain. They'll be inside the uh, red zone, inside the 20-yard line of the Royals. Farrar, one back, hands off once again. Grimes slams forward, finds some running room, and gets the ball inside the 15-yard line, down to about the 11 or 12 of the Royals. They quickly go back to the line of scrimmage. They're calling the play from the line. It's third and one for the Shamrocks. Handoff once again to Grimes. Has some running room. Surges forward enough. Should be fairly close to the first down. In fact, inside the 10-yard line. That'll make it first and goal for the Shamrocks. So Grimes, a successful run inside the senior running back. And the Shamrocks now. We talked about the need to strike early. Wide open offensively. They started off with a big, big, big pass play. And now they're first and goal. Here with 10-14 left to play in the first period. So far, a real sense of urgency coming out of Westfield. Absolutely. They are going to work here very quickly as Farrar. Play action pass. Rolls to his right. Has some room. Has some space. Now throws it back across the field. Wide open. And you talk about wide, wide open. Got the ball into Devin Reese. It's touchdown Shamrocks. That really was a terrific play as he really went completely cross-grain on the pass and had a wide-open receiver in the end zone, and the Royals now stunned a little bit as the Shamrocks draw first blood. Extra point attempt. Kick is up. And the kick is good. So the Shamrocks do draw first blood here. And Westfield here early in the first period goes up by a score of 7 to nothing. 9.56 left to play, and that did not take long. Just a little bit over two minutes and four seconds elapse off the clock. And the Shamrocks strike. Shamrocks on the road against the Royals. And now we'll get an opportunity to see what the Royals' answer will be as Tyler... Janey will bring this squad up to the offensive line following the kickoff. This tends to be the way Hamilton Southeastern plays with a very quick offense. And the Shamrocks gave them a dose of their own medicine as here with just a little bit over two minutes left to play or actually two minutes off the clock. In the first quarter, we are finding ourselves, the Hamilton Southeastern Royals find themselves down by a score of 7 nothing. 
Shamrocks will send Nick Dowd out, their kicker. A week ago, we saw a lot of different tricks employed by both teams, special teams-wise. Let's see if this will be a straightforward kick or not from Westfield. The kick is up, and it will come down inside the 10-yard line. On the return, Demetrius Crockham. Crockham eludes a pack of tacklers. He's at the 30, 35. He's at the 40. He'll get the ball to about the 43-yard line. Make that Chris Ford on the return. And Ford gives them excellent field position. The Royals will begin on their own 43-yard line. Chris Ford uh, using uh, good vision there to get himself uh, away from the pack, elude the initial tacklers, and give the Royals a nice first down. They'll start this drive on their own 43. Janie. Hunter Hardy will be in the backfield. Three wideouts available for Janie, branched wide out. Janie, long snap count. The handoff is to Hardy. Hardy up to midfield and then some. Hardy finally forced out of bounds at the Westfield 45. That'll be a first down run for him. A gain of 12. First and 10 for the Royals. So Hunter Hardy. Ball right at the 45-yard line. 12-yard ramble there from Hunter Hardy. Showed some good second effort. First and 10. Janey will be in the shotgun now. Crockham in the backfield with his familiar number 28. Long ball. They launch it. Tried to get the ball into forward. Incomplete. Nice pass, but uh, good coverage down the field. So Demetrius Crockham, maybe this will be his good luck tonight. He's wearing number 28, one of our favorite runners for Hamilton Southeastern. Also excellent at the linebacker position. As Crockham dons his familiar number 28, he's in the backfield along with Janie. Janie will have three wideouts. Second and 10 following the incomplete pass. They're at the Westfield 45, trailing by a score of 7-0. The handoff. Crockham rumbles and stumbles. Had some good second effort. They'll spot the ball close to the 44-yard line. A four-yard gain for Demetrius. It'll bring up now a third down and six. Ball at the Westfield 41-yard line. The Shamrocks scored here early tonight. And now a pivotal third down for the Royals. Third down and six, one back in the backfield. It's Crockham. Janey, long snap count. Back, play action. Tries to find a receiver. Hits one over the middle. Down to the 25. An excellent reception on the play. That is Kyle Schrank, the big senior tight end. And Schrank gives the Royals first and 10. They're going to spot the ball at the Westfield 25-yard line. That's what this crowd wanted to see. Good third down conversion as Janey keeps this drive alive. A drive that began at their own 43-yard line. Janey now with Hunter Hardy in the backfield. Pistol formation, three wideouts. The handoff to Hunter Hardy, and the white jersey sniffed that out pretty quickly. There were a number of Westfield Shamrock players in, including Anthony Dockerty. And a loss of one on the play as that play just never got underway. Right after Janney handed that ball off, he got smacked around in that backfield. That'll bring up a second and 11. 7.52 here in the first period. The Royals on their first offensive set trying to answer that early Shamrock score. As Janey back in the pistol formation. Janey, quick pass on the slant. 
Ball is caught. Receiver is down to the 21-yard line. On the catch was Cameron Polk, the very talented wide receiver. And that will... They're going to say now roughing the passer, flag on the play. And this will give them a first down inside the 15-yard line once they march this one off. First down for the Royals. The ball will be marked down at about the 11-yard line of the Shamrocks. So we watch the Shamrocks go down here and score. Looks like the Royals are knocking on the door as well. Now in the red zone of the Shamrocks. 7-26 as Janie under center. Quick pass. He tries to hit the fade in the corner of the end zone. Are they indicating touchdown? Or are they saying he was out of the back of the end zone? Tried to hit the fade. They had Cameron Polk right in the corner of the end zone. They're going to say that Cameron was out of bounds. A tremendous play. And uh, that's the kind of athleticism you need from your wide receiver. So that will bring up a second down. They can get a first down without scoring. The uh, first down would be right about the one-yard line. As Janey brings him up to the line, in the backfield is Hunter Hardy. Hunter Hardy, the lone back. Polk and Ford, the wideouts. Play action. They tried to go with the slant. Tried to get it into Chris Ford. Ford, unfortunately, couldn't find the handle on that as that ball was up and out of the way. And Chris Ford, who is a junior, 6'1", 170 pounds, good athleticism, but just could not haul that ball in. So that brings up, once again, another critical third down, third down and 10, following two incomplete passes here as the Royals are down to the 11-yard line of the Shamrocks. Janey now with Hunter Hardy in the backfield. Rolls to the right, tries to find some room, gets chased out of the pocket, he's going to be sacked. Was sacked on the play. Good defensive pressure. That was uh, Matt Krupe and others will bring him down for about a six-yard loss. The ball will be back at the 18-yard line, and they're going to send out the field goal unit. So Brady Hoffman now will be attempting a 35-yard field goal here. Thirty-five yard field goal. The kick is up, and it looks like it is good. So, thirty-five yard field goal try is good, and Hamilton Southeastern at least answers with points of their own. So, two drives, two teams, and the Westfield Shamrocks find themselves up by a score of seven to three. Six thirty-five left to play here in the first period at IU Health Field, the home of the Shamrocks. That makes it that make that the home of the Royals. Every aspect of play in this game will be critically important. Special teams play is where the Royals excelled a week ago. It's Brady Hoffman, the man who just put points on the board, will be kicking back off to the Shamrocks. Shamrocks impressive in their very first drive, which began on their own 24-yard line. They went the length of the field and scored with a touchdown pass. Let's see if the Royals' defense has some answers for them. Kick is up. And Devin Reese will get that ball, but it is well deep into the end zone, and the Shamrocks will begin their next offensive series, first and 10 on their own 20-yard line. So 
Uh, last Westfield drive seemed like they caught the uh, Hamilton Southeastern defense by surprise. I'd be interested to see. I, now that we have an awake defense. I think that you're correct about that. We've got plenty of muscle in there as they've now gone to a 4-3, and we've got some linebackers in position to rush as they're trying to apply some extra pressure. They hand off to Grimes. Grimes gets nowhere. That play was stuffed before it could even begin. In on the tackle is Frank Sergi. Sergi on the tackle. Contains Grimes for just a one-yard gain, and they do go Westfield into that hurry-up offense, which we saw as Farrar back in the shotgun. He's got three wideouts, two backs in the backfield. Play-action pass. And once again, they hit a wide-open receiver for first down yardage. In on the stop was David Herman, but not before the Lafalian was able to pick up a first down. And the Shamrocks go right back to work. They're uh, first and 10 at their own 41-yard line. Farrar waiting for the play to be shuttled in from the sidelines. Farrar now with the handoff. Tries to find some running room outside and does. Picks up about six yards on the play. And the stop on the play was Ryan Clements. Clements on the stop, but not before they pick up. About five yards. They're going to spot the ball about the 47-yard line. 5.22 left to play here in the first period. Shamrocks are up by a score of 7-3 on their second offensive series. Handoff tries to find some running room. Forced out of bounds. That was a big hit on the play. In on the stop was Julius Hardy. And the Royals hold Grimes to just a couple of yards. We'll bring up a second down and about two. The ball just inside the 49-yard line of the Shamrocks. So third and two is Farrar. In the familiar shotgun formation, he'll have two backs with him, two wideouts. Farrar with the handoff. And to the first down is Elvin Caldwell, the ball carrier. And Caldwell will give the Royals a first down. Royals now platooning in some fresh members of that defense. And as Dan said, this was a defense that was caught unawares. Certainly, if nothing else, the tempo of the Shamrocks impressive here early in the game as they are first and ten in Royal territory at about the Royal 47-yard line. Farrar, quick pass, and that one was almost picked off. Excellent defensive coverage on the play. That was Lloyd Turner, and Turner was closer to the ball than the intended receiver for the Shamrocks. So the Shamrocks are going to have to be a little careful. That ball could have easily been a pick six. Incomplete pass brings up a second down now as Farrar in the pistol formation. He's got four wideouts. The delayed pass, make make that the delayed handoff, the draw, and it's very effective as he's down to the 30-yard line. Good open field tackle to bring him to the ground. That was Cameron Polk. Polk, the talented wide receiver, also playing defensive back, and that uh, delayed handoff from two Elvin Caldwell Caught the Royals by surprise, so the draw gives him a first down. They're going to spot the ball about the 26-yard line of the Royals. Back, quick pass, the slant, and they couldn't find the receiver. They tried to get it into Milo Beam. Good coverage on the play. A couple of Royals players back there, including Ryan Clements. So the quick slant, a no-go. And the Shamrocks now face second and ten. Farrar is impressive here. One back in the backfield. Once again, the handoff into a sea of blue jerseys. But did manage to pick up some yardage there. Had a couple of different Royals in on the stop, including Jimmy McCarthy. And that will bring up a manageable third down now. And about five, the ball is on the 21-yard line. So Farrar now, one back in the backfield. 
four wideouts. Rolls to his right. He's got time. Fires it. Ends up firing it to the ground. Could not get the ball in. Intended receiver was Devin Reese. And Reese was upended on the play by his counterpart, Cameron Polk. Polk kind of told Devin Reese, not here, not today. And now Westfield faces a fourth down. And they, too, will attempt a field goal here. Both teams with effective kickers. This one will be a 39-yard field goal attempt. Once again, the Shamrock kicker, Nick Dowd, the junior, on the field to attempt this 39-yard field goal. The kick is on the way, and it looks like it's good, and it is. So the Shamrocks, two offensive series and points both times. They lead the Hamilton Southeastern Royals by a score of 10-3. to So Westfield, two possessions, two scores. Impressive. And, uh, Dan, as you said, uh, this is a team that marched right down the field. And the Royals, despite some uh, impressive talent on defense, just couldn't seem to slow them down. It appears to be a hard team to keep up with so far this game. They've just come at them with one play after another, very little time in between plays, and to understand how a little bit can get lost in between. Well, the hurry-up offense now is uh, something that's really coming to light both in the NFL and NCAA. And there have been some coaches that have even spoken out a little bit saying that uh, the hurry-up offense could potentially promote injury because you don't get a chance to sub in some fresh players. But certainly one thing that the hurry-up offense will do is test the defense, and we've seen that here now twice from the Shamrocks. Dowd will kick off for the Shamrocks. And the Shamrocks, I think, a little bit surprised here to find themselves up by a score of 10-3. Ford kicks up, camps under the ball. Ford out to the 20, the 30. Still stays on his feet to the 40. Stays on his feet, knocked out of bounds, close to midfield. Let's see where the spot is. But another excellent return for, uh, from Chris Ford. So the Shamrocks, or make that Hamilton Southeastern, will commence again with good field position. Their first offensive drive was at the 43. They'll set up camp now on the 46 as Janey will bring the team out. Janey will bring him up to the line. Hunter Hardy is the back. Chris Ford lined up wide to the right, and the handoff to Hunter Hardy. Hardy surges forward, gets a yard or two before being hauled down. They'll spot the ball about the 47-yard line. So Hunter Hardy slashing inside. They're going to give him a one-yard gain. It'll bring up second and nine. Perfect time of the evening as the light now evening out for both teams. And the Royals find themselves down here by a score of 10-3 with 2.51 left to play here in the first period. Janey, the handoff to Hunter Hardy. Hardy tries to find some running room. Off left tackle, gets the ball inside Shamrock territory. They'll spot him at about the 48-yard line. That will bring up a third down and a long four here. So a third down situation here facing the Royals. Ball inside Shamrock territory. This drive began on their own 46. 2-15 in the first period. They are down by a score of 10 to 3. Eye formation behind Janey. Puts his receiver in motion. The handoff to the fullback, and I believe they are going to get first down yardage with this carry. I'm about right in line with it, and it certainly looked like a first down to me. It still does. Good surge there on the carry Yep, was Chase Wilson. 
So they use Wilson as the fullback. He surges forward. And the Royals are in business first and 10 at the 44-yard line of the Shamrocks. Janey with Demetrius Crockham in the backfield, a very dangerous runner. Three wide outs branched, two to the left, one to the right. Janey, delayed hand up to Crockham, and Crockham slips and falls, and he'll lose a yard or two. Demetrius Crockham just never got started on that point of attack, and now uh, Crockham will limp off the field. He is... uh, grabbing the area of his left hamstring. So with some luck, he'll be able to work that out on the sideline. Second down and 11 now. The ball at the Shamrock 46-yard line. Hunter Hardy, the back in the backfield, along with Janey. Three wideouts. Play action. Rolls to his right. Eludes a tackler. Throws. And it is caught. Good catch. Excellent reception. Cameron Polk. And we talked about this might be Cameron Polk's breakout game. And Polk is going to be forced out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. So the Royals get a nice gain there. It'll be first and 10. About 50 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. Janey, long snap count. He's under center, back to pass. Has time, slant, and in and out of the hands of Cameron Polk. Polk would have caught that. If Polk had caught that, that was a sure touchdown catch. As it is, it'll fall harmlessly to the turf, and that'll bring up a second down for the Royals. That was an excellent slant pass as Cameron Polk showed his athleticism. So Janey and Hunter Hardy in the backfield. Janey in the shotgun pistol. Three wideouts. Janey on the quarterback keeper. Goes behind the block. Hunter Hardy did a nice spring block there. And depending on the spot, this could be a first down for the Royals. They are indicating first down as Hunter Hardy scampered there for about 12 yards. And they're going to spot the ball at about the 16-yard line. Make that right about the 16. 39.9 seconds. The Royals trail in this game 10-3. Their first offensive series of the evening resulted in a 35-yard field goal. Now the officials indicating the clock has started. Janey under center. Janey, quarterback keeper again. Janey with some great running. He'll get behind a couple of blocks. And Tyler Janey on the ground gets the first touchdown of the evening for the Hamilton Southeastern Royals. So Janey. Nice rushing touchdown on the design keeper. And with 33 seconds left to play, they're within an extra point of tying this game. As Brady Hoffman will be out for the important extra point. Kick is up and the kick is good. Hamilton Southeastern would have liked a an offsides penalty there as it is though. The extra point ties this game up. So, kind of what you'd expect from both of these teams. Lots of offense in this first quarter as it's 10-10 to now with 33 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Royals fans excited here on homecoming evening. We'll undoubtedly see, we're going to see a, a lot of things going on here. A lot of nice convertibles. And, uh, of course, they'll have the uh, homecoming court and the homecoming king and queen, Dan, who will be treated to a lavish evening night on the town at Fishers. As you know, Fishers is where it's all happening. 
This message brought to you by the Fisher's Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> They'll probably pop in at the Dairy Queen and the local Five Guys. And I know that Dairy Queen's got a special on Blizzard, so I'm sure that the Homecoming King and Queen will be enjoying their favorite flavored Blizzard this evening. <laughs> As Brady Hoffman here will be putting the ball back in play for the Royals, and the Royals, I'm sure, relieved, answering with a touchdown of their own to answer that early touchdown from the Shamrocks. Kick is up. Bit of a squib kick. It'll come down around the eight-yard line. Up to their 20, their 25. Good special teams coverage. Excellent coverage on the play. Down to make the tackle is Nathan Fagley. And Fagley upends Devin Reese. And will hold him to about a 19-yard return. It'll be first and 10 for the Shamrocks on their own 23. So let's see what this offensive series will promise for the Shamrocks. Two touches in the first period and two scores. As Farrar will be in the pistol formation with Reese in the backfield. The handoff to Reese and Reese smothered absolutely dead on on that play was Jimmy McCarthy. McCarthy was coming and he was not going to be stopped. McCarthy stops Reese, a loss of about six. Ball inside now, back to the 18-yard line. And that will be the final play of the first quarter. So at the end of one complete here at IU Health Field, the home of the Royals, it is 10-10. And uh, lots of fireworks from both sides. And maybe McCarthy and that great stop will spark this Hamilton Southeastern defense, which we know has plenty of talent, but they are rocking a little bit from this hurry-up offense presented by the Shamrocks. Shamrocks began their first offensive series from their own 24-yard line. Uh, got the ball in the end zone via the passing route. Then on their next possession, started at their own 30, uh, their own 20-yard line, 39-yard field goal, and they find themselves with 10 points to the Royals' 10. But a great play from McCarthy will bring up a second down and very long for the Shamrocks as they switch ends now and get ready for the second period. Both these teams came in here four and one, so they both knew how to play. They both knew how to win. And a good battle here tonight for the Royals on homecoming. So Farrar now will be in the pistol formation. One back in the backfield. That is Frank Grimes. Back to pass. Quick pass. Tries to find a receiver. On the slant. It is caught. And uh, offensive stop, stop there by Ryan Clements. Will set up a third down. And about seven. They're going to spot the ball right about the 26-yard line of the Shamrocks. Third down and seven now. Farrar back to pass. Has time. Slant pattern to Reese, and it'll be a first down. On the stop was David Herman, but not before they were able to get a first down with Devin Reese out of the backfield. First and 10, they're going to spot the ball right about the 40-yard line. Farrar has not strayed away from the hurry-up offense here, and he stays in that. One back in the backfield and movement there, but nobody threw the flag. Movement from one of the wide receivers, but I think they got lucky there because he did not begin the snap count. Back to pass. Quick pass, lofts it, tries to get it into his receiver, ends up throwing it out of bounds. Tried to hit Devin Reese on a sideline fade, and he ended up throwing the ball out of bounds. He had to get rid of that one very quickly. Lots of pressure being applied by that Royals front three. Farrar now hands it off to Reese. 
Reese will be held for only a gain of two on the play. Excellent coverage inside. That was Brian Roberts in on the stop. It'll be third down now and seven. They're going to spot the ball at the 43-yard line. 10-36 left to play here, second period. Farrar, back to pass. Throws it, has a man open. Forcing him out of bounds was Herman. But once again, they're using that... uh, Secondary as they uh, played tight and they were able to get the ball over the head. That was uh, Ben Lafalian. And now it's uh, first down, 35 yard line of the Royals. Handoff up the middle. Wow. Good running room. Stop on the play, Demetrius Crockham. But that was a uh, nice pickup up to, tw- up to the 25 yard line. Another first down for. Westfield as Frank Grimes there showing his explosive inside running. Farrar with Grimes in the backfield. He's got four wideouts. Farrar back to pass. Now it's the draw play. Grimes with the ball. He'll be wrestled to the ground right around the 20 yard line. Stop on the play by Frank Sergi. Second and six. The ball very close to the 20-yard line. 9.44 left to play here in the first half. Farrar, long snap count. Looks, has a receiver open. The ball is caught, and it's going to be first and goal for the Shamrocks. Once again, inside, Devin Reese. Reese was lined up in the slot. They hit him over the middle. And just briefly, I looked away because it looked like Farrar was going down for the sack. And as it turned out, no sack make it first and goal for the Shamrocks. So the Shamrocks here applying lots of offensive pressure against this Royals D. Farrar, one back in the backfield. The handoff. Devin Reese bounces it outside, and it's a touchdown. Make that Frank Grimes on the carry. And Grimes finds the end zone. And Westfield puts points on the board again. Three offensive series, three scores for the Shamrocks. Absolutely impressive Shamrock drive as they get the ball and go instantly to work. A drive that began on their own 23-yard line. Dowd on for the extra point. Dowd's kick is up, and it is good. So the Shamrocks now find themselves up by a score of 17-10. to 10. And you know, Dan, back in the day, it's always easy to say back in the day for some of us that remember what back in the day was, high school football was a little lacking in the entertainment field, and I'll tell you why. Execution was always a little shoddy. It was just kind of like, you know, player A leaning into player B. You are clearly seeing at this level, and we've enjoyed this by covering the Royals for a number of years, I would call it execution. But this particular group of athletes, very entertaining to watch on both sides of the ball. Absolutely. And the Royals here, I think, uh, are looking at uh, quite a challenge here tonight. as they find themselves down by a score of 17 to 10 with 9.16 left to play here in the uh, in the first half. So we've always talked about the importance of special teams tonight. It's special teams getting a big workout because both teams have been scoring. So Dowd's we've kick seen is two great up. Great returns by these Royals so far. Ford with the ball at the 20. The 25, the 30 stays on his feet. Finally gets hauled down about the 32-yard line. 
But once again, another good return from Chris Ford. And the Royals now will answer, score down. They're down 17-10 with 9-10 to play here in the second period. So Hamilton Southeastern has not been too shaky themselves on offense. Their first offensive series resulted in a 35-yard field goal, a uh, Janey touchdown, and now first and 10 on their own 33-yard line to commence here in the second period. Janey is under center. Hunter Hardy's in the backfield. Play action. Tries to loft the ball up, and it's intercepted. Picked off. He'll be hauled out of bounds. The uh, intended receiver was Cameron Polk. The ball just never arrived, and Adam Horke for the Shamrocks intercepts. And uh, first turnover of the game. And the Shamrocks now will get the ball first and 10 at their own 31-yard line. But a... uh, Very heads-up play there from Cameron Polk, who once he realized the ball was going to be intercepted, was very quick to haul the Shamrock defender down. So Farrar has been the magic man. He goes into the pistol formation, back for the quick pass. Hits his receiver on a short pattern. He'll be down to about the 36-yard line where it'll be second and about five. That was Devin Reese on the reception, so quick pass from Farrar. The handoff up the middle and with some second effort gets the ball close to a first down. At the 40-yard line, we'll bring up a third down and about two. Shamrock's definitely in a very hurry-up offensive set here as they go back to work almost immediately, Farrar, with four wideouts. Farrar back for the quick pass, slant pattern, in and out of the hands of his receiver and right into the hands of Dakota Ream and Dakota just could not bring that ball in, but importantly, this brings up a fourth down. It's going to be fourth and one, but it does look like the Shamrocks are platooning in their punt team. The ball is right about the 40-yard line. I'm sure after that turnover and after this hurry-up offense, the Royal defense will be glad to get off the field. I think you're right. And the fake punt... They uh, snap the ball to one of the up defenders, one of the blockers on the play, and it'll be first and 10 for the Shamrocks. They only needed about a yard to go, and they picked up about a yard and a half, so that shows you this is a game of inches, but the Shamrocks stay in business where it'll be first and 10 at their own 43-yard line. So Farrar and company come back out. That is Elvin Caldwell in the backfield. And is there a timeout being called on the field? Eight oh eight. Shamrock's up by a score of seventeen to ten. Royals reeling a bit here on defense. Farrar, who has been the man of the hour here for the Shamrocks, in the shotgun. Caldwell in the backfield. He's got four wideouts. For our quick pass, the slant hits it in the middle. And another good gain for the Shamrocks. On the stop was David Herman, but not before. Lafalian was able to bring the ball down inside the 30-yard line of the Shamrocks. Word is first and 10 at the Royals' 28-yard line. Farrar. Delayed handoff. Caldwell, not much there. In on the stop was Curtis Goss. Only about a gain of one on the play. It'll bring up second down and nine. Still 
Farrar with Caldwell in the backfield. Shifts his receivers around. He'll have three wideouts. Royals in a 4-3-D now. They may switch out of that. Go back to a 3-4. As Farrar, long snap count. Back to pass. Has time to pass. They tried to hit uh, Lethalian on that uh, familiar slant. The ball in and out of his hands. Incomplete. Now it'll be third and nine. Lafalian is uh, only listed as six foot, but he seems taller. And they're finding that inside position with him as he lines up in the slot. Farrar, one back in the backfield. Pistol formation with three wideouts for the Shamrocks. They are ahead 17 to 10. Farrar, back to pass, has time, lofts the ball, corner. Lafalian with the catch, and it'll be first and goal. Lafalian inside the five yard line. And a perfect, perfect placement pass from Farrar. Farrar's been lights out. And I'll tell you, Dan, one thing that we're seeing here is Farrar is having all the time that he'd like to throw. And that's part of the problem. They are not getting any defensive pressure on Farrar. As Farrar brings him up first and goal, they're going to spot the ball right at the three-yard line. One back in the backfield. It's Caldwell. Farrar. Farrar hands off to Caldwell. Caldwell tries to find some running room and gets upended. Excellent stop on the play. In there to clog up the uh, running lane was Christian Pena. And Pena upends Caldwell. Actually dropped him for about a one-yard loss. It'll bring up second and goal from the four. So Pena there, the man of the hour, stopped that run. Farrar once again, one back in the backfield. Two wideouts, tight formation, fourth and goal. The handoff, and once again, hauled down from behind. An excellent stop on the play, very heads up. Colin Miller, and Colin came across from his defensive end position and put a stop to that play. It'll make it third and goal now. The ball back at the five-yard line. So two back-to-back one-yard losses, which is exactly what the Royals needed here. Farrar now waits for the waits for the play to come in from the sidelines. Are they going to get it off in time as the clock ticks down to four seconds? They call the timeout. So a bit of disarray for the Shamrocks, and the first time we've seen them look, look to hesitate for even a moment, but two incredible stops from the Royals, and the Royals needed that. With 525 left to play, the Shamrocks up by a score of 17-10 to 10 and threatening to score here once again. Well, this has been an epic battle, and I'm sure one of the things that the Royals would have liked to have seen tonight was... A homecoming, yeah, a homecoming where uh, there was little or no work. As you know, it's usually the athletic director, Dan, that says we need to have some team in here that we can uh, treat like a bad hand puppet. But tonight the Shamrocks have been giving the Royals all they can get. Oh, yeah. So here is the moment of truth as the ball rests on the five-yard line. The Shamrocks, third and goal. And the Royals looking for a stop here. 5.25 left to play here in the first half. And the visiting Shamrocks up 17-10 over the Royals. Farrar, Devin Reese in the backfield. Make that Frank Grimes. Grimes the running back. Play action. They hit Grimes coming out of the backfield. And were they able to get him out, keep him from the end zone? No, they were not. Grimes on the play action, then swings to the right, catches the ball, and despite some defensive pressure, the Shamrocks once again score. So an impressive display here from the Shamrocks who have scored on the ground and in the air. That's their second touchdown pass of the evening. And uh, impressive as uh, they really have just been an offensive onslaught here tonight. 
I'll be interested to see what Farrar's final statistics are as he has just been lights out. The kick is up, and it is good. And tonight, the Hamilton Southeastern Royals find themselves reeling a bit with 5.20 left to play here in the first half, down by a score of 24 to 10. I don't think they expected this from this Westfield squad. Both teams came in here tonight 4-1, and one, so the Shamrocks were a for-real team. They just might not have faced as tough an opposition, but uh, they are bringing everything they've got here just shy of bringing in the kitchen sink against these Hamilton Southeastern Royals. One thing that we have always appreciated from uh, a Scott May-led team is Scott is not afraid to gamble offensively. So my guess is he has instructed this offense to kick it up a notch as the Royals now down by a score of 24-14. to They'll get the ball back with about 5.20 left to play here. Boys talk about these kickers. You never appreciate him until you need him. But, boy, tonight both sets of kickers have gotten quite a workout as Dowd's kick is up, and it will go into the end zone and will result in a touchback. So the Royals will commence from their own 20-yard line. Hamilton Southeastern Royals now face 80 yards to go to put up another answering score on the scoreboard. So the Royals being tested here severely on their homecoming. It's a good hard kick to remedy the uh, long returns that we've been seeing so far out of Hamilton Southeastern. I think they've, been, instru yeah, they've been instructed to kick away yeah. from Chris Ford. Demetrius Crockham in the backfield. Wide receiver in motion. The handoff to Crockham. Crockham tries to find some running room. Off right tackle. A gain of about six or seven. They're going to spot the ball at about the 28-yard line. So Crockham showing some of that power running he's capable of. Give him a seven-yard gain. They'll spot the ball at the 27. Second down and three. 4.58. And the clock ticks as the Royals would like to get a score here before halftime. Janey goes to work. Tight formation. Two wideouts, but they're branched in very closely. Looks for the quick swing pass. It is complete, close to first down yardage. They get the ball into Kyle Schrank. And Schrank gives him a first down. They'll spot the ball at the 31-yard line. So a four-yard pass and catch to Schrank. Schrank was dropped immediately, but importantly, Schrank gave him the first down. Janey in the pistol formation. Back, the handoff to Hunter Hardy. Hardy with some good running out past the 40-yard line. Hardy very close to first down yardage there. And they, are they indicating first down? They are. So a 10-yard ramble there from Hunter Hardy. First and 10 on their own 41-yard line. Crockham in the backfield now as they are bringing fresh players in. Janey under center. Two wideouts. Janey, long snap count. The handoff to Crockham. Crockham gets the ball a bit late, but Crockham picks up a couple of yards. They had a little trouble getting the ball to Crockham as Janey tripped on the way back for the handoff. A gain of two. It'll bring up second and eight. Ball is at the Royals' 43-yard line. 341 left to play here in the first half. Two scores here from Westfield in the second quarter have left the Royals reeling. So they hope to get at least one of those scores back here as Janey in the pistol formation. Back, quick pass. 
Hits his receiver. It is caught. He's forced out of bounds. On the catch was Austin Hogan. They're going to spot the ball at the 48-yard line. That'll bring up a third down and three. Third and three for the Royals. Quick snap to Janie, and let's see the outcome of this play as one of the Hamilton Southeastern coaches is on the field and is very upset with the players. So there is a flag on the play, and let's see what the call is. Is it Well, I'm not sure if there's a flag or not. I think the Royals tried to do a quick snap while the Shamrocks were out of position, and the Hamilton Southeastern Royals coaching staff not particularly pleased about the outcome of that play. It is third down and three. So apparently no call, no no problem on the play, but it leaves it at third and three, ball at the 48-yard line. 2.49, clock is stopped. So the Royals obviously would like to get a score here before this half ends. They have been a little shy about the downfield yes, they have. Uh, play. Exactly they it. really have a lot of short passes here tonight. Uh, Tyler Janey uh, was intercepted once in this game, but they have really not tested the long ball here, and especially with the talents of Cameron Polk, but we'll see. As Crockham is the back in the backfield, they are lined up. Power left. Hand off to Crockham. Crockham slams into some white jerseys, picks up a first down. He'll be inside Shamrock territory. It'll be first and 10. They're going to spot the ball right about the 45 yard line. An excellent gain on the play. A seven yard run for Demetrius Crockham. First and 10 for the Royals. Hunter Hardy in the backfield. Janey under center. Hardy with the carry. Drags a couple of white jerseys with him as he's forced out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. Should be a gain of five on the play, and it looks like it will be. So second down and five. They're going to spot the ball right at the Shamrock 40. Clock is stopped with 2.37 left to play here in the first half. An exciting game as the Royals scored 10 points in the first period, but they have a goose egg on the box score here for the second quarter, and they'd like to change that as Janey in the backfield. Hand off to Demetrius Crockham. Crockham finds some running room. Stays on his feet. Spins. Stays on his feet. Ball all the way down to the 24-yard line. Demetrius Crockham showing what a dangerous runner he can be. A 14-yard gain. And they'll spot the ball right at the 25-yard line. So Demetrius Crockham came through with a nice run when they needed it. And Crockham in the past has been lights out. And he's showing a little bit of that old form here tonight. 25-yard line, first and 10 for the Royals. 2.20 on the clock as Janie goes under center. Crockham stays in the backfield. They've got three wideouts. They're all branch wide to the right. Power right. They hand off to Crockham. Crockham reverses field. Can't find any running room. Gets upended about the 25-yard line. They tried to spring him. Crockham, when he looked up, three white jerseys coming his way. He reversed field. Janey tried to throw him a block. Uh, This will be, uh, well, they're going to actually credit him there for about a three-yard gain. So Crockham turned uh, lemonade out of lemons there. Keeps the Royals alive. 136, the clock ticks. Janey with Hunter Hardy in the backfield. He has three wideouts. Janey. 
Quarterback keeper. Holds on to the ball. Gets the ball down to the 15, the 10. Stays on his feet. Surges forward. It'll be first and goal for the Royals. Hamilton Southeastern Royals when they needed it. Janey, who has an earlier rushing touchdown on the design keeper, ran behind that big offensive line. And first and goal from the nine-yard line. One twenty-one. The clock starts to tick again. Janey will be under center. Eye formation right behind him. Hunter Hardy along with Ryan Ford. The handoff to Hardy. Hardy tries to find some running room. Hardy stays on his feet. Hardy gets down to about the three-yard line. An excellent run around that big left-hand side of the line for Hunter Hardy. And timeout called. Timeout called. It'll be second and goal. They're going to spot the ball at about the three-yard line. So, yes, three-yard line. A little difficult to see from these angles. And, of course, you know, keeping with the soccer tradition, Dan, you and I may be the only guys in central Indiana that like soccer. We meet a few soccer fans every once in a while. We understand the need for soccer markings on the field. It's just we're thinking during the football game, could we put some green on that yellow? Because it's always a little tough sometimes to see. Get somebody out there with the paintbrush or something. Yeah, we need to to get the uh, paintbrush out there. But they're down to the three-yard line, and the Royals desperately need this score as they find themselves down 14 points here. And uh, they'd certainly like to cut that in half, that margin in half at halftime with 54.1 seconds on the timer. And we're looking forward to what undoubtedly will be a a big halftime and part of that important rite of passage for high schools, the homecoming king and queen. Eye formation behind Janie. Janie puts a man in motion. The handoff to Hunter Hardy. Hardy slashes forward. He's going to be close to the touchdown, but not quite across the plane. They're going to spot the ball inside the one-yard line. Hunter Hardy on second effort. Tried to extend outwards. That big offensive line out there, including Tyler Klink, providing the muscle on the left-hand side of the line. 29.2 seconds. They call timeout. Timeout called by Westfield. So the Royals came up to the line. Shamrock said, now wait a minute. The ball is right at the one-yard line. So it is third and goal. This is what makes football pretty darn exciting. You know, there was a recent commercial about Friday night football here in, in, you know, in central Indiana. And you got to admit, for five bucks... Oh. This is a game, baby. Absolutely. You're not going to see this much action. And we talked about Scott May and his group of coaches. The Royals always well prepared for any match. And I think Dan was the one that pointed it out that the Shamrocks just uh, kind of overpowered a very talented defense for the Royals. Caught him a little bit by surprise. But the Royals always very good at catching up. And that's exactly what the Royals are trying to do right here. Crockham will be the eye back. Third and goal right at the one-yard line. Ford is the up back. Eye formation right behind Janie. Janie awaiting the snap. The handoff. Crockham. I think Crockham lost the ball. Demetrius Crockham lost the ball on the handoff. Janie couldn't get the ball into Crockham. And just like that... The Hamilton Southeastern Royals turn it over on their own one-yard line. That was a tough break for the Royals. 24 and a half seconds, you know, they don't have a whole lot of time to do anything with the ball, but still a very very demoralizing turnover. I think unless uh, something really odd occurs here, the Shamrocks will just go into victory formation or maybe just run a play up the middle. Crockham just never had the handle on that ball. And uh, Crockham usually very sure-handed, very talented, uh, and I think had a had a lane to the end zone. But that fumble was a critical play for the Royals now who have committed two key turnovers, 
and find themselves down by a score of 24-10. to 10. So the Shamrocks deep in their own territory. The ball is spotted on their own two-yard line. And Farrar... Farrar will be in the shotgun. In the backfield is Frank Grimes. And the handoff is up the middle to Grimes. Make that actually uh, Farrar on the keeper. And they're going to just let the clock tick here. So that will be the final play of the first half. And uh, the Royals driving down to try and get back some points. We'll go in halftime. The score is the Hamilton Southeastern Royals 10 and the Westfield Shamrocks 24. A offensive powerhouse game being shown by both sides with the Royals with two key turnovers find themselves 14 points in arrears on homecoming night. So we will train our cameras to the middle of the field and enjoy the halftime festivities here at Hamilton Southeastern. And we'll be back with an exciting second half of football action here. This is audiosportsonline.com. Olivia Pickley and Alex 
devotional leader of the National Honor Society. He includes Lou Cruz, current leader, a member of the Best Buddies, a camp to come to counselor for three years, a member of the Principal's Advisory Council, and a three-year player on the lacrosse team. She plans to attend Purdue University, Notre Dame, or the Union U University of Michigan to study biology with an ultimate goal of attending a medical school to become a pediatrician. Johnny Gooder and Sophie Edelsenberg. Our next home run board member is coming down the track. Justin Asprey and Maddie Brooks. Justin is the son of Lisa and Joe Mastery. He has been a student of the month, and he wants to attend the Ball State University next year. Natty is the daughter of Randy and Steve Brooks. She is president of the film club, the co-president of the Riley Dance Marathon, member of the National Honor Society, a freshman mentor, among other things. In the future, Natty will be pursuing a degree at Oxford University next fall. If that falls through, she'll attend oh, Indiana oh, University. Oh, that scored next twice year. in like last three minutes. Justin Nestor and Natty Brooks. Uh, Zigzag with the two. Oh, nice. Our next home run board member is coming down the track.
Well, always impressive when they introduce some of the uh, movers and shakers of Hamilton Southeastern. And you have some students out there that have made some amazing accomplishments, Dan. One of the uh, girls that was in the homecoming court actually had formed her own nonprofit and had uh, contributed to running a school in Africa. So it just shows you the achievement level both athletically and off the field here at Hamilton Southeastern. It's their homecoming, and they just uh, paid homage to the homecoming court here this evening. Both teams are back on the field completing their warm-ups, and Hamilton Southeastern still trying to find some answers after being down now 24-10 to at halftime. be interesting to see what kind of adjustments they're making. The uh, defense... I think was a little unprepared for Westfield's tempo here tonight as they came out uh, slinging the ball around. In fact, the very first uh, play for Hamilton or for the Shamrocks, the visiting Shamrocks, was Farrar with a 35-yard-plus pass reception, and that kind of set the tone for the game here. It has been almost all offense here tonight for the Westfield Shamrocks. In fact, every possession in the first half resulted in a score. Hamilton Southeastern Royals tried to answer with a score of their own. They got the ball back with about five minutes left to play on the clock. Started at their own 20-yard line. They had driven 79 yards. They were first and goal from the one-yard line. Make that third and goal from the one-yard line. And unfortunately, they could not get the handoff to uh, running back Demetrius Crockham. They fumble, and the first half ends with a score. Westfield 24, Hamilton Southeastern 10. Obviously, the Royals would like to give this homecoming crowd a victory here tonight as we're uh, near capacity. Friday night lights, and uh, wow, what a game. Another outstanding contest here at audiosportsonline.com. Doing the camera work tonight is... Dan Wood. And Dan, this is your uh, first trip to Hamilton Southeastern, isn't it? That's right. I've driven past it many, many times. It was my first time. I decided to stop on in and film a football game. There you go. You've often said to yourself, if only I could stop in there and film a football <laughs> yeah. game, my life would be complete. If only I had my camera. If only uh, I had my camera and the appropriate uh, internet, I, w- I could broadcast anything. And that's the beauty of uh, audiosportsonline.com so we certainly hope that you are enjoying tonight's game if you're a Royals supporter and we suspect that you are you'll certainly want to see them rally here tonight the Royals will get the first touch of the second half so that is good news for them back to receive this kick is Chris Ford who's been electrifying tonight as well as Demetrius Crockham and uh Maybe Ford can give him a little bit of magic here tonight, give him a great return. The Royals need to get some scores here and hold that prodigious Westfield offense.
So Nick Dowd will kick off here. We'll put another 12 minutes on the clock. The second half about to commence here at IU Health Field, the home of the Royals. And now a flag is up right before Dowd started his kickoff. And let us see what the... Uh, I think they're going to say delay of game against Westfield. So Westfield will be forced to kick off from their own 35. And this might be a bit of a break as this will give some more field for the talented return team of Ford and Crockham. The Royals also have some of their hands players out on the field just in case Dowd should attempt some type of onside kick. We saw a lot of special teams play a week ago when the Royals played the Broncos of Lafayette. Ford is going to get the ball. Has some trouble finding the handle. He's at the 15, the 20. Picks up speed. He's at the 30. 40. Stays on his feet. He's going to get the ball out to about the 45-yard line. Another excellent return for Chris Ford, who just seems to find that perfect space and that perfect balance. Runs like a man out of control, but keeps control. Tight ropes it, and it's first and 10 for the Royals. They'll start on their own. 45-yard line. So Last eight. kickoff, we saw Westfield drive it right out the back of the end zone. And so I think you're right, Jay. I think that penalty might have hurt him a little bit more than they may have anticipated. As because yeah, I think that that uh, penalty ended up being a huge break for the Royals. Let's hope they can uh, cash in here as Janey under center. One back in the backfield. The handoff. Hunter Hardy. Hardy crashes into the line. They're going to bring him down at about the... 47 yard line gain of two there for Hunter Hardy it'll bring up a second down and eight so the Royals down a couple of scores here Janie Hunter Hardy is the back in the backfield three wide outs back in the pistol back to pass the quick pass Tries to get it, feed it in to Chris Ford, and the ball's intercepted. Once again, Westfield taking care of some opportunities. Their second, Wes Gangnan, with uh, the second interception tonight for the Royals. So the interception to bookend an interception and a fumble in the first half, and the turnover woes continue for the Royals as Hamilton Southeastern, or make that uh, Westfield now, will take over on their own 50-yard line. So a bad break is Farrar in that familiar pistol formation. Farrar is back to pass, and he has really slung the ball around. Gets the ball into Devin Reese, and some real punishment dealt out on that play by Ryan Clements. After a gain of about three, the ball is in Royal Territory at the 47-yard line. Second down and seven. Reese, the handoff up the middle, bounces it to the outside, stays on his feet, picks up a first down. A gain of about nine on the play. That was Frank Grimes. They're going to spot the ball at the Royal 37-yard line, and here come the Shamrocks again in that hurry-up offense, first and 10 in Royal territory. The handoff, Grimes slams into the line, met by a wall of blue jerseys, and he's not going anywhere. Once again, at the bottom of the pile is Ryan Clements. So it'll be second down and nine. Farrar keeps the intensity up with the hurry up. He has four wideouts, one back in the backfield. Farrar now changes the play at the line of scrimmage. The handoff up the middle. Some running room. Tried to spin away on the stop was Brian Roberts. Grimes was able to pick up 
about six yards on the play. It'll bring up a third down and four. The ball at about the 37-yard line. Play action. Hits another receiver and another first down. That is LaFallion. And LaFallion gives the Shamrocks a first down inside the 20-yard line. They're going to spot the ball at about the 17. So they're in the Royals' red zone. And now they're saying there was a hold on the play. So a break for the Royals following the first down catch from LaFallion. And this one's coming back. So this Shamrock intensity is continuing here in the second half. They take the ball on a turnover and drive from their own 50-yard line. But this is a costly penalty. They're going to set the ball all the way back to the 35-yard line. It'll be third and eight there. Ferrar, one back in the backfield. He's got four wideouts. And he just drew the Royals offside. So he barked signals. The Royals jumped. And they'll get five yards back. It'll be third down now and uh, a long two and a half. They'll bring the ball up to the 30-yard line. So this makes it a very manageable third down for Ferrar and company in the Westfield Shamrocks. Ferrar was getting ready to audible off the play. Looks over at the sidelines. Long snap count now as the clock ticks within 10 seconds. Ferrar, delayed handoff. Tries to find some running room. Ground right end, and will they be close to the first down? It looks like they will be first down. So thought it was going to be a little bit close, but they are indicating first down. They get the ball down to the Royals' 25-yard line, and the Shamrocks snap up, and they are ready to go. So Ferrara with Caldwell in the backfield. And Ferrara. Once again, looked like he was getting ready to start the snap count. Looks over at the sideline. Readjusts the offense. Ferrar. The handoff to Caldwell. And Caldwell won't get much. Ran that between the garden tackle on the left-hand side of the line. And uh, good defensive coverage provided there on the stop was Jordan May. Still got a four-yard gain, though, and the ball is down to the 21-yard line. Handoff up the middle. That is Elvin Caldwell. Caldwell inside the 20. Be a gain of about three on the play. It'll set up a third down and about four. Third and four. Ferrar will have two backs in the backfield, two wideouts. Ball right at the 20-yard line, just inside the 20-yard line of the Royals. Caldwell with the carry, bounces it outside, and he's going to be close to a first down. Good defensive stop there by Lloyd Turner, but not before Caldwell was able to pick up another first down for the Shamrocks. They're going to spot the ball at about the 15-yard line, so first and 10. For the Shamrocks, this is their first touch of the second half. A series that began on their own 50-yard line. So Farrar, one back in the backfield. Three wideouts. Farrar, back to pass. Has time. Tries to get the ball on the slant. Could not get it in to Jacob Robinson. Robinson was incomplete, and uh, that will bring up now second and ten. Good defensive coverage as the Royals' defense now digs in. 
three costly turnovers, and the Royals find themselves down two scores with the threat of going down three scores here as Farrar resets the offense, one back in the backfield. Farrar just gets the ball in time. Back to pass. Has some time. He's going to throw it away. He does get it to Devin Reese. Are they going to say he came down with it? They're indicating touchdown now. Devin Reese in the back of the end zone. I thought he was throwing it away, but Devin Reese with the touchdown. So Devin Reese, a 50-yard drive that ends in a Devin Reese reception in the end zone. And Farrar, even when it looks like all is lost, Farrar, who had to hurry up and snap that, Gets points here for the Shamrocks in the second half. And this is a tough one because this puts the Royals down by three scores. So Dowd will add the extra point. And the Shamrocks are now up by a score of 31-10. to So the Royals reeling here. They came into this game 4-1. and one. Shamrocks 4-1, and one. and boy, the Shamrocks have given the Royals everything that they can handle here tonight. 6.57 on the scoreboard clock here to go in the third period. And, of course, one of the things that uh, is starting to go against the Royals now is time. They've got to get time to put together three scoring drives here to tie this football game. Crockham will go back along with the electrifying Chris Ford to field this kickoff. So Crockham and Ford. Ford gave the Royals excellent field position to start this second half. I'm guessing this one's going to the back of the end zone again. Well, Dowd uh, has warmed up, if nothing else. He's kicked off a lot here tonight with the uh, Shamrocks up by 31 to 10 and we've covered a lot of Royals games this is uh, uncharacteristic of the Royals and they are going to have to dig themselves out of a very big hole here as Dowd will kick the ball he's going to pooch kick it keep it away from that dangerous return duo and that ball was up in the air for a short time but bringing the ball down is Robert Kirchmer and Kirchmer will give the Royals a safe possession there as the Royals will commence their second offensive series at their own 31-yard line. So the Royals now desperately in need of a score. They've got some weapons, and uh, tonight they just have had some trouble uncorking one of those key weapons. Um, That in the guise of Cameron Polk, their dangerous wide receiver, who is one of the best wide receivers in the state, but they've just had trouble getting the ball to him. Janey, handoff to Hunter Hardy. Hardy will get about three or four yards. That will pick. That will be a gain of uh, only a three-yard gain. Will bring up a second and seven. Ball is at the Royal 33-yard line. 6.30 left to play here in the third period, and the Royals are down by a score of 31-10. to 10. Janie under center, and they are stacked wide to the left. Hand off to Hardy. Hardy slashes across the 40, stays on his feet down to the 45-yard line. It's a first down. Picks up 13 yards, and it'll be first and 10 for the Royals. So Hardy needed that run and got it. And now the Royals. Royals are marching. Their first offensive series here of the second half resulted in an interception as Janey is under center. One back in the backfield. Back for a quick pass. Tries to hit the slant. Tried to get the ball into Polk and just passed the outstretched hand of Polk. Polk would have caught that right around the 50-yard line, but it was incomplete. So the Royals cheerleaders 
trying to get this crowd going here tonight. Let's see if we can get the 12th man in play here, give the Royals some spark here as they are down three scores here in the second half. Janey back to pass, sets up the screen. The ball is up in the air, dangerously up in the air. They tried to get the ball into Austin Hogan. Hogan wasn't able to get the handle on that and uh, was an incomplete pass, but for just a brief moment up in the air, and that could have been a dangerous play. And that was a tough one because that will bring up now third and 10. They are at the 45-yard line. Big third down is Janey now in the pistol formation with three wideouts. Janey back to pass, tries to get the ball into, but could not get the ball to Austin Hogan. Hogan was running the post pattern and past the grasp of Hogan, and this will bring up a punting situation for the Royals. So the Royals... Having some problems getting untracked here in the second half. Will be forced to punt. And the Shamrocks do have a dangerous returner of their own right. Devin Reese. Actually, they're going to put uh, Turner Edwards back. And uh, timeout called on the playing field. So the Shamrocks, I think, uh, had the wrong return team. And they're going to go back and regroup. Hopefully the Royals will use this timeout as well to regroup themselves. One of the things that they'll definitely need is a defensive stand here and to get the ball back quickly for the offense. So Royals on a homecoming evening hosting the Westfield Shamrocks. And Shamrocks, have uh, they've not been good guests here tonight as they have uh, been an offensive joggernaut, putting 31 points on the board to the Royals' 10 with 5.46 left to play here in the third period. So the Royals will punt from about their own 32-yard line. And it'll be... Turner Edwards back for the Shamrocks. Ball will come down about the 20-yard line. Edwards picks up the ball and gets slammed to the turf. No return there. Good special teams coverage there. Frank Sergi was down on the stop. And the Shamrocks will be first and 10. They'll be deep in their own territory back at the 14-yard line. So this has been a quarterback that has carved them up tonight. Nick Farrar, the senior, 6'4", 200 pounds. He'll have two backs in the backfield. Play action pass. Passes down the middle. It was wide open, but it was through the hands of Ben Lafalian. And I believe that was Herman on the catch, David Herman. But they say that uh, Herman trapped it. But that was a, another wide open receiver for the Shamrocks. Second and 10 now. Farrar, handoff, running room to the almost 30 yard line. Stayed on his feet. A good run there from Frank Grimes, the senior running back. And Grimes gives the Shamrocks a first down. They'll be at the 29-yard line. And just like that, they hand off Grimes with another big run up the middle, a gain of about six. And a tackle on the play for the Royals. That's Demetrius Crockham.
Another handoff to Grimes, and this time nothing going as Brian Roberts got penetration and dropped Grimes in the backfield with, for a loss of about three. They're going to spot the ball back at the 37-yard line. But, boy, the Shamrocks just keep coming at you like a prize fighter. As Farrar now, two backs in the backfield, three wideouts. Farrar barks out the call, checks the sidelines. The Royals await in their 3-4. Farrar now in the hurry up and then wait a while offense. Farrar back to pass, play action, has time. And once again, left Follian with another great catch. Gives a first down to the Shamrocks. And they really don't have an answer for him as they're going to spot the ball at the Royals' 43-yard line. First and 10 for the Royals, or make that the Shamrocks, inside Royals territory. Farrar, he is, uh, he's been menacing here tonight. Back to pass. Make that uh, the handoff up the middle. Upended at the 30-yard line, but another terrific gain for Frank Grimes. Grimes gives Westfield another first down. They've got the ball inside the 30-yard line. They're going to spot the ball about the 28. And Ferraro with the hurry up, barely waiting for the chains to come forward. And movement in the center. We don't know if it's going to be illegal procedure or not as a Royals player was drawn into the neutral zone. They're going to say offside against the Royals. So once again, Farrar changing up the snap count and drew the Royals offside, and that's a free five-yard gain. It'll put the ball at about the 23-yard line of the Royals. He was wearing them out the first half, and now he's just got him guessing. Yeah, this is a t- this is tough to watch the Royals. They've got a lot of talent. Boy, tonight, though, they have been schooled by Farrar. Farrar back, play action pass, has time. Has the post, couldn't get it into his receiver. On the slant was actually a slant post that was Milo Beam, and Beam just couldn't bring that ball in. But I got to tell you, that ball was there. And once again, the one element of this that you've got to say is Farrar is getting time. They are not putting any defensive pressure on them, moving him out of the pocket. He's got time to just stand back there and pass. 3.29 left to play here in the third period. Shamrock's up by a score of 31 to 10 and they're threatening. Farrar with two backs in the backfield, three wideouts. Calls. The handoff and nothing going. Grimes ran into three blue jerseys. Demetrius Crockham led the charge. Also in on the stop was Will Cordray. And uh, Nothing going there. And that will bring up a third down and eight. The ball at the 26-yard line. So here's a key third down. Here's a chance for the Royals to get a stop and get the ball back. So Ferrer calls off the play. Back. Play action. Once again, has time. Swing pass out of the backfield. Down to the 20. Down to about the 16-yard line. He's going to be shy of the first down. Or no, he did get the first down. So once again, the swing pass out of the backfield. That was Frank Grimes. And it'll be first and 10. The ball spotted at the 16-yard line. 236. And Westfield now up by a score of 31 to 10 and threatening to score again. So Ferrer having his way here tonight with the hurry up offense against these Royals and the Royals on the ropes again. Caldwell in the backfield, three wideouts for the Shamrocks. And looking a little bit like Peyton Manning is Ferrer here with plenty of uh, audibles at the line. Now he's back. Quick pass. Fires it to Reese, and it will be dropped. Reese is dropped right at the 10-yard line, but not before he picked up about six or seven yards on the play. It'll bring up a second down and three. 
One fifty-six, and the clock ticks. Farrar with Caldwell in the backfield. Three wideouts. Second down. Handoff. Caldwell. Caldwell surges inside. He's going to be close to first down yardage. And should give the Shamrocks a first and goal here, depending on the spot. I think they're going to call the chains out here to see. Nope, they're going to just go ahead and give them the first down. So first and goal. The ball at the six-yard line. 139 left to play here in the third quarter. This is a very quiet crowd here tonight as the Royals are shocked. Hand up to Caldwell. Caldwell got maybe a yard or two. Ball very close to the five-yard line. Got stacked up inside by that Royals defense. Royal defensive pressure there being applied by Jimmy McCarthy. So the ball now on the six. Second and goal. So Ferrer back to pass, has time, tries to get the slant, and it is caught, but I think they kept him from going in the end zone. Devin Reese on the reception, and Reese uh, with a very pro-like move to try and break the plane down there. It'll be a third down, but the ball will be spotted just inside the one-yard line. Now they go up into the tight formation. Ferrer on the quarterback keeper. He's a big, strong runner. And Ferrer with his third rushing touchdown on a quarterback keeper. And the Shamrocks score again. So the Shamrocks went in at halftime by a score of 31-10. This is their second touchdown of the second half. And Dowd will come out for an extra point. We sometimes chuckle about the fact that the kickers don't work very hard, but Dowd may have to ice his leg here tonight as he's uh, on for another extra point. Dowd's kick is up, and it is good. So a score that, frankly, I've had a chance to cover quite a few Hamilton Southeastern Royals games that I would have been shocked that Westfield, the team that the Royals have had their number the last three years have come in here and are now up by a score of 38 to 10 so lead by four touchdowns over this Hamilton Southeastern Royals team so the Royals here tonight will be playing for pride in that final quarter of this game well we were a little concerned Shamrocks went down on their very, very first offensive series that uh, there might be a little too much Shamrocks here tonight for the Royals, and uh, our fears have certainly proven themselves here tonight as the Royals are facing an almost insurmountable lead here as we are getting very close to the final period. Dowd will kick off to Ford and Crockham. Ford has been uh, one of the more optimistic or has given him some uh, bright spot here tonight as the pooch kick will come down around the 35-yard line up to the 40. The Royals returner stays on his feet and gets the ball down to about the Shamrock 42 or 43-yard line. And now there are some boos from this home crowd. And I'm not sure exactly what the call on the field here is. The refs confer and the coaching staff confers. Apparently no call on the field. So the good news is is that the Royals will begin on the Shamrock 42-yard line. Janie in the game. Three wideouts. Janie, the handoff to Hunter Hardy. 
Hardy with some running room. Drags a white jersey with him out of bounds down to the 30-yard line. It'll be first down, a 12-yard carry for Hunter Hardy. So Hardy has been a bright spot here tonight as well. First and 10 for the Royals. 30.7 seconds left to play here in the third period. Hunter Hardy. Hits the line hard, slams through a couple of would-be tacklers. Gain of about four. They'll spot the ball about the 26-yard line. It'll bring up a second down and six. One back in the backfield. It's Hunter Hardy. Handoff. To Hardy. Hardy slashes past right guard. Second effort. He'll be down close to the 20 yard line. Probably just a little shy of the first down. And depending on the spot. Yes, it'll be third down. And just under one. And that'll be the final play of the third period. So at the end of three complete here at IU Health Field. It's the visiting Westfield Shamrocks 38. And a shocker here tonight with the Royals with only 10 points. Those 10 points, by the way, were scored in the first period. So we've seen two scoreless quarters here from the Royals, and the Royals are paying for it now. We saw most of the uh, third quarter clock gobbled up by Fair in this Westfield offense. The um, Hamilton South- Southeastern offense really didn't see hardly any of this the ball until no not at all. I'm with you all the way and that's uh that's the other dangerous thing about this uh, shamrock offense besides the hurry up they also can get you in the hurry up to avoid defensive substitutions yet then hold up call some audibles look over at the sideline and eat up a lot of that play clock and still get the ball off without a delay of game So Janey brings him up. This will be the first play of the fourth quarter where the Royals will be third and a short one. They'll be right at the Shamrock 21-yard line. Crockham in the backfield. I formation. Ford is the up back. The handoff is to Crockham. Crockham finds running room around left end. He'll be forced out of bounds. At about the 15-yard line, it'll be first and 10 for the Royals. Five-yard gain for Crockham, and it's a first down at the Shamrock 16-yard line. 11.55. Royals down by a score of 38-10. to 10. Janey with Crockham in the eye. Tight formation, one wide out. The handoff is to the up back. And that was Ford, I believe, on the carry. And that was Ford on the carry. Only picked up one on the play, so it'll be second and nine. Crockham will be the lone back in the backfield. Two wideouts and a tight slot for the Royals. Janey, back to pass, rolls to his left, gets chased out of the pocket, eludes the grasp of a couple of tacklers, still remains on his feet, rolls around to the right. He's got some running room. He's going to be forced out of bounds. He'll be forced out of bounds at the 10-yard line. A lot of work there, and I believe they are going to call... Well, they did throw the flag. I believe the penalty is for some out-of-bounds discussion between the Shamrocks defender and Tyler Janey. Let's see what the mark-off is here as Janey was able to get the ball up to the 10-yard line. Talk about the ability to evade some tackles. Yeah, he was uh, the play was, busted he was twice. definitely in the grasp of a couple of would-be Westfield defenders. They're spotting the ball officially now at the 11-yard line. That would set up a uh, third down and about four. But they threw the flag 
out of bounds, and let's see what the call is. Personal foul against the Royals. So apparently when we thought maybe the Westfield uh, defender had said something, I think possibly Tyler Janey had said something. Not sure who they're actually calling this on, but a costly penalty as it will bring up third down and a long 19. Ball back on the 26-yard line. They've got to be about the 7. So third down and 20 now. Janey back to pass. Has some time. Tries to find a receiver in the middle running the post pattern. Just could not get the ball into Austin Hogan. Hogan tried to bring the ball in over his left shoulder, and that'll bring up fourth down. So fourth down and a ton following the personal foul call. And the Royals, four down territory, will go for it this late in the game. 11.07 on the clock. Janey with the empty backfield, four wideouts. Janey gets flushed out of the pocket, gets upended at about the 24-yard line. And that'll be the end of that series as the Royals will turn it over on downs. Boy, that was a tough end there. And uh, we talked about the fact we've had scoreless quarters. That scoreless drought continues as uh, the Shamrocks now find themselves up by a score of 38-10. Sure, we'll see some substitutions in here very soon, if not on this series. And they keep Farrar in the game. He'll have one back in the backfield, and they're going to whistle this one dead. So a timeout was called on the field by the Shamrocks. So the Shamrocks with a timeout. So here's the Shamrocks here tonight playing effectively. No turnovers, yet three turnovers for the Royals. The Royals with two costly interceptions and a lost fumble. And the Royals here have had nothing but uphill sledding. 11-03 left to play here in the game. And now you would have to say this is an insurmountable lead as Farrar goes back to work. Number 13, but it's been a lucky number for the Shamrocks here tonight. One back in the backfield. The handoff to Caldwell. Caldwell stacked up. Caldwell, after about a three or four yard gain. Stop on the play by Jimmy McCarthy. They still stay with the hurry up here as they almost draw the Royals into the neutral zone. Farrar now brings him up to the line quickly, but he's taking his time to snap the ball as the play clock now down inside 10. Farrar delayed handoff to Caldwell. Caldwell fights forward to about the 30-yard line. He'll be about four yards shy of a first down. That will bring up a third down and four ball at the 30. Once again, Caldwell remains in the backfield. Farrar looks over to the sideline. He has called a masterful game as the clock ticks within 10 minutes here. Shamrock's taking their time, making sure they wind that clock down with every single play. The swing pass in and out of the hands of a normally very sure-handed Lafalian. And uh, the incomplete pass now will bring up a long fourth down deep in their own territory. And we're going to see 
what may be t- potentially a rare punt here from the Shamrocks. The Shamrocks only punted, had one punt attempt, but that punt attempt was a fake punt, which resulted in a first down. This, I think, may be their uh, first real punt of the evening as Josh Estridge goes back to punt. Estridge will punt from about his own 18-yard line. Ford can't find the handle to it. Finally picks it up around the 20. Ford up to the 25. Tries to get outside. Good special teams coverage. And Ford is limited to about a six-yard return. And the Royals will get the ball back just inside their own 30-yard line. Now they're saying... The ball is at the 31, so they gave Ford a little bit more of a generous spot. First and 10. Janey remains in the game. Hunter Hardy is the back. Three wideouts. Janey back to pass. Tries to hit the slant pattern and does. Good pass. Good catch. And picking up some generous yards after the catch is Cameron Polk. And Cameron Polk, a very dangerous weapon, gives the Royals a first down at the Shamrock 45-yard line. So the Royals now go hurry up on their own. The handoff up the middle. Hunter Hardy is able to get about a four-yard gain. They'll spot him at the Shamrock 42-yard line. Pickup of about three on the play. Second down and seven. Janie now back to work quickly. Back for the quick pass. And he hits Ford. Ford down the left-hand sideline. And Ford about uh, seven or eight yards after the catch gives the Royals another first down. They're going to spot the ball at about the Shamrock 27-yard line, where it'll be first and 10 for the Royals. The handoff. Looking for running room. Hunter Hardy. Hunter Hunter Hardy bursts through the secondary. He'll give him first and goal. An effective run up the middle. They'll spot it at about the 16-yard line. So Hunter Hardy, another great run. And the Royals here trying to put some points on the board in the second half. Hunter Hardy will bounce it to the outside. Does he have room? He does. Hunter Hardy airborne for the last two yards of that run. And Hunter Hardy scores the touchdown for the Royals here in the second half. So the Royals, it took them a while, two scoreless quarters, but they come back and score here in the fourth period. Brady Hoffman will be in to try the extra point. And a white jersey comes up over the top of the blue line, and let's see what the call is going to be. Encroachment against Westfield. So that will put them now uh, down to the one-yard line, and I guess decision time for Scott May. Are they going to go for two? We talked about the fact that uh, this may be an insurmountable lead, but this is not going to stop the Royals from fighting as uh, Janie brings the uh, – First string offense back onto the field. Crockham is out there as running back. And with the up back will be Ryan Ford. So they're going to go in that I formation, that power I. The Royals like to run. They are uh, going to go for two here. Hand off to Crockham. Crockham slashes forward and he gets it. So Crockham puts two points on the board. And 8.37 left to play. The score is 38 to 18. So the Royals get eight points here in the fourth period. And the Royals will fight to the very end. Ten points in the first quarter, eight points here in the fourth. 
as they trail now 20 points to the Shamrocks. But a defensive stop here certainly would change the uh, complexion of this game as Hoffman now may attempt an onside kick. This is a very crafty Royals special teams. And uh, we'll see if uh, Hoffman tries a little razzle-dazzle here and tries to give the uh, Royals possession back. So Hoffman tees up the ball around the 45-yard line. More players on the left than the right. Let's see, is this going to be the onside kick? They are trying it. And it goes straight into the arms of a Westfield Shamrock who goes quickly to the turf. And the Shamrocks will get the ball at their own 50-yard line. So the onside kick not successful. We'll see if the Royals can stop the Shamrocks here as the Royals are not going to give up here on homecoming night. 8.35 left to play, down by a score of 38-18. to And it'll be interesting to see if Westfield keeps their first string in in response to the fact that the Royals are still going to pull out every stop to try and win this game. And they do indeed stay with that first string team as Farrar comes out. For our handoff, slashing up the middle. Gain of about five or six. Stop on the play. That is Frank Sergi inside. Another slashing run there from Frank Grimes. Grimes gives him a six-yard gain. They're going to spot the ball at the 44-yard line. Second down and four. Farrar in the pistol. He'll have three wide outs. Branch wide to the left. Farrar. Handoff. And no going. They're going to drop him for a loss. On the carry was Frank Grimes. And a nice stop on the play there from Nathan Fogley. And that will bring up a third down and six for the Shamrocks. 7.22 on the scoreboard clock here in the third period. Another third down being faced here by the Shamrocks. Quick slant in, and will they hold him? Very, very quickly drugged to the ground following the slant pass. That was Adam Miller. And that will bring up a fourth down and one. Shamrocks are platooning on what may be their punt team here. The Royals will have to let the clock tick down some, but it does look like the Royals may get the ball back here as the Shamrocks were able to get the ball down to the Royal 41-yard line. The Royals will be back at their own 10-yard line to field this punt if it is indeed a punt. And, yes, the punt is up, and it looks like it will go into the end zone and will, and uh, the Royals will commence their next offensive series, first and 10 at the 20-yard line. So the Royals, on an impressive-looking drive last time, came down, got a touchdown, got the two-point conversion with the uh, Crockham run, and let's see if they come out firing on all cylinders here. 6.23 and anything is possible here for the Royals who have come from behind plenty of occasions. Janie, one back in the backfield. Tight formation, two wideouts. Janie, back to pass. The pass and the catch to Austin Hogan. Hogan gets the ball out to about the 30-yard line, first down. They're going to spot it at the 31, so 11-yard catch by Austin Hogan. 
and Janie very quick to set up the offense. Janie, quick slant pass and misfired. Tried to get the ball into Kyle Schrank. The ball went to the turf. There were a couple of Shamrock defenders nearby, so that could have been a dangerous pass. It'll bring up a second and ten. Janey sets up the offense. Two wideouts, brings one of the wideouts now wide to the right. Janey tries to get the slant. I'd be a little surprised if we didn't see the flag there as they tried to get the ball into Polk. And uh, and that was a mauling that the, uh, yeah. that the receiver took, but no flag on the play. The ball was... Not necessarily going to be catchable, but I still think a little manhandling there from the Shamrocks who get away from it, get away with it. It's uh, third and ten now. Janey will be in the pistol formation. He's got three wideouts. He's back to pass. Tried to get the ball slant down the middle and just couldn't get it to Austin Hogan, who I think briefly had the ball and then got manhandled by that Westfield secondary. That ball was there. Hogan just couldn't find the handle. And now the Royals up against the wall here on fourth down. will go for it, fourth and ten. Now make that back. We'll take that back. Janey is going to be back to punt. So Janey will punt the ball away. Ball comes down at about the 32, and the Royals are going to get the ball back. Oh, wow. The Shamrocks mishandled, and they're saying the Shamrocks got the ball back. Great special teams coverage, but they just couldn't get the ball back. I'm a little surprised as the ball came right out of the hands of the Shamrock return man, and somehow... Well, you talk about blinking and missing a play there. I would have thought for sure the Royals had the ball as they had two defenders on the spot. But unfortunately, you talk about when uh, you're just uh, on a roll, the Shamrocks there got extremely lucky that they did not turn the ball over. So first down, 18 points plus on the board here as Farrar goes back to work. Pistol formation with two wideouts. Handoff. Westfield runner. Gets about three or four on the ground. They're going to bring him up just shy of the 38-yard line. 545. And the Shamrocks here can afford to slow this game down, but they still stay in the hurry up as Farrar brings him up to the line. Ferrar with the uh, quick setup and then methodical countdown is keeping the Hamilton Southeastern Royals from changing up the defense. And the handoff once again running up the middle. Keeps his legs moving. Frank Grimes with another carry and an effective one as the Shamrocks will be about two yards shy. Make that about a yard shy of the first down. They're going to spot the ball at the 43-yard line of the Shamrocks. So Westfield here still having their way with this Royals defense. Brings up a third and one. 444 now, and uh, we talked about the fact that uh, time was going to be the enemy of the Royals. And the Royals did show some glimmer there after that uh, quick score. But uh, Shamrock's quickly extinguishing hope here as the clock ticks down. Farrar under center. Caldwell the ball carrier. Caldwell with the carry. Down to the 50. Caldwell inside Royals territory. Gets the ball all the way down to about the 45-yard line. It'll be a pickup of about 16 on the play. They're going to spot the ball at the 46. So Caldwell with an effective third down run for the Westfield Shamrocks gives them another first down. 4.20 left to play in this game. Shamrocks up by a score of 38-18. 
Farrar with a rare huddle, bringing them up. The handoff. The runner bounces outside. Picks up about four yards. They're going to spot the ball at about the 41-yard line. So a gain of five on the play. Make that the 42. So gain of four. It'll be second and six. And, Dan, here's a rarity. We're seeing some huddle from the Shamrocks. I, I didn't know they knew how to huddle yeah, because that hurry-up yeah. offense was employed through about two-thirds of this game as the Shamrocks now methodically putting an end to what has been a masterpiece on the road here against the Royals. A handoff. Guarding the ball with two hands is Caldwell. Caldwell's progress is stopped at about the 40-yard line, gain of two. That will set up a third down and four. Two fifty one. Shamrocks will end up going five and one. Royals will go four and two after tonight's game. So a disappointing homecoming for the Royals here against the visiting Shamrocks. Farrar, two backs in the backfield. The handoff to Caldwell. Caldwell will be just a bit shy of the fourth down or make, make that just a bit shy of first down, but it'll be fourth and about a half yard. They're going to spot the ball very close to the 35-yard line. Officially, the ball will be at the 36, so they're just inside a half yard to go, but they're down in Royals territory, so this is undoubtedly a play that they'll go for as the clock ticks down inside the minute 50 mark. Farrar brings him up. Caldwell will be the lone back in the backfield. Tight formation, but there will be two wideouts. And on the quarterback keeper, Farrar surges forward. I think he's got just enough for the first down. Farrar with uh, two rushing touchdowns tonight. He's a powerful guy. And that is another first down for the Shamrocks. They'll spot the ball right at the Royal 35-yard line. Minute 34, not too many snaps left in this game as Westfield huddles up. And the Shamrocks have avenged now a couple of years of being pushed around by the Royals. Tonight was their night. Shamrocks now will only have to snap the ball and take a knee. And they'll have to do this one other time. And this game is, for all intents and purposes, over following that play. So the Shamrocks come here to IU Health Field under a minute left to play. 38-18. to 18. They'll have to take one more snap here, but this one's over. As for our uh, handing out the uh, kudos to his offense, they have been spectacular here this evening, racking up some impressive yards, scoring the first six times they got the ball here tonight. Shamrocks uh, were like a prize fighter. They uh, kept punching. They never let up. Farrar now just one more snap away from ending this game. Takes a knee, and that will be it. Final play of the fourth quarter. And the Shamrocks, after being pushed around for the last couple of years by the Royals, will prevail on the road by a score of 38-18. to 18. Tough one for the Royals tonight. Homecoming night, Hamilton Southeastern High School. For Dan Wood, I'm Jay Baker, audiosportsonline.com. Thank you very much, and have a pleasant good evening.